to do a little video here to show you how the H3J controller can work in a hybrid mode or what we call a complex workflow environment. So that's our environment. So we have a lot of experience with complex workflows. Uh, in our case, we go through an ATEM as our primary video switcher, and then we go through Wirecast, which also has some video inputs from Skypes, and we do all of our lower thirds in our videos um, through Wirecast after the ATEM. So what I'm going to show you is this controller controlling both Wirecast and an ATEM simultaneously. So let's hop over to the controller. So what I have here is I have the ATEM output right there, so you can see all the different things on the ATEM. And what I have here is Wirecast. And then on this side is we have our Wirecast remote control program that we created. And we that's a whole other video on how that works. But what I want to show you is, for example, in Wirecast, if I go to shot five, which I just was on, you'll see that the lower third pops up right here or down the bottom right here. And when I go to six, it goes away. So I'm physically switching five and six on the ATEM. So if I go to the ATEM and I look at six in preview, there's six in preview and there's five in preview. So you see me swapping between them. When I go to five, I also am telling Wirecast at the same time that I want to apply a lower third. So that's configured in this software. So when it says, when it sees the button five, go to program or preview, it wants to put the lower third. See right now five's in preview. So you see in the preview, the lower third ready to go on the preview side. So when I go to five, it just will bring right up and ready to go. Now, the other thing is I've can told the switcher that I only want it to be able to control, the A10 to be able to control three, four, five, and six. So you see there's nothing on four right now. Four is blank as you can tell right here. So if I go to preview on two, nothing happens on the A10 because it's happening on Wirecast, and you can see it happening right here on Wirecast, because I have told this device, this control surface, that these are the only four that I really want to control on the ATEM with this configuration. So um, these could be controlling vMix or an ATEM or Wirecast all simultaneously. So in this instance, um, I'm going to go back to there's five in preview, and I could go, I could even cut the five directly, and you can see it comes up which switches the ATEM plus does the lower third. This is a two-way communication with Wirecast. So right now, you know, this button is configured for recording. I am recording this on Wirecast. Um, I'll give you an example of a two-way. So on our software, we have two timers that are right here. I'm going to start the timer, and you're going to see this button right here light up as soon as I press it, because it sent back saying that we have started the timer. I can stop the timer right here, I can clear the timer. I can do everything I want to do um, in a two-way communication. If I would stop recording, this light would go out immediately. So this is getting information back from Wirecast consistently, as at the same time as getting it back from the ATEM. If I would go to the ATEM software, which I can do that right here. Um, so here's the ATEM, and you see I have six live, five in preview. Let's say I take six to preview, you see Six changed right here. I want to go to four in preview. Right there it is. There's four. So this is a two-way communication between the ATEM and our Wirecast uh, remote control software. And it's pretty quick, actually. If you're uh, making changes in Wirecast, you can see them here uh, pretty easily as well. So let's say box one, I'm going to uh, put into a preview. And you see one lit up, ready to go. So if I go to one, we're now in our double box shot that we use on Let's Make It. So that's done in Wirecast. So what I'm taking is the input from the ATEM. You can see by that, if I switch to another one, different input on different double box. Now you can set it up so it doesn't work that way, or if you want to either change the double box, you can do it either way. Uh, there's a couple, couple ways you can do that in the configuration. But you can see right now I'm functioning in a complex configuration where I'm controlling both switchers simultaneously. So this is controlling both this and this right now. Now in our environment, we don't use vMix in production. Uh, we do have a copy of uh, the free copy of vMix that we've tested with. And I'm going to show you another video of this controlling vMix as well. And um, there's another video of this just controlling each of just Wirecast and just the ATEM. 
at the same time. And it's good to go through and watch the video on the configuration of the switcher because the, that video walks through how you configure this to do exactly what I'm doing. And you can see that flexibility that's built into the switcher. So any kind of complex environment can pretty much be uh, adapted to using the switcher. And if you find a complex environment that we can't adapt to, you need to let us know and we'll try to get that added in there. Currently, this switcher, this device can do vMix, a Wirecast, and an ATEM. And we're looking to add more. Um, where our focus has been on those three for this initial release of the device. And uh, as we go forward, we'd like to add more of more in there. So obviously the T-Bar doesn't do anything in Wirecast because there is no T-Bar in Wirecast. It works uh, in the ATEM and it works in vMix uh, just fine. These buttons are all programmable. Like I said, I've basically told the switcher three, four, five, and six, I want you to switch the ATEM and I want your tally to come from the ATEM. That's why you see whenever I change my tally around on the ATEM that it, you see that down here. And right now I don't have connection to it. Get back in there. So you see me bouncing around on the ATEM at the bottom with the previews and so it communicates exactly like the, I'm just gonna iPad control to control the ATEM but it basically works exactly the same with tally information. Now, what I've told it is that buttons one, two, seven, and eight are, are tally information is coming from Wirecast, not from the ATEM. That's why if I go, and you can see on here, if I go to cam two, which I lost the connection again, hang on a second. It'll be back shortly. If I go to cam two, you see there's no tally information on here. So you can see as I go across, two doesn't re redo anything, neither does one. Even though it's doing something on the ATEM, my controller doesn't understand what one and two do. Now this is an ATEM television studio, so it only has six inputs. So in my case, seven and eight are actually extra. So it doesn't make sense to send anything to, and to the uh, ATEM for seven and eight. In fact, if I did, it would come up color bars, I believe, and uh, color are the two options that if you send seven and eight mistakenly to an ATEM television studio. Now these are pretty much, these buttons are pretty much used all the time in a channel configuration. However, they, they can be adapted. Um, for example, if you're running only Wirecast and you wanna run in a non two bus mode, what you can do is say, this is special button one, two, three, four, and goes up to eight, and then it starts nine across, and then it comes back and it's 19 through 24. And these are considered special buttons. And when you get into the looking at the software, you can, can run you can run the, the Wirecast software in a two bus mode if you're used to that. Or if you wanna run each of these as different things, you can do that as well. And these buttons are all programmable as well. Right now we have them set up for cut and auto, DSK one, DSK two, because we just did the video on the ATEM, but these are all programmable. And if you watch this, the configuration video, it'll show you how this is all e so easily programmable. In vMix, there's a lot more options. So these buttons can do a lot more things. The uh, first four buttons I believe are fixed to channels, but these buttons can be channels or can be other functions inside of vMix. So this is our C200 running in a complex environment, what we call hybrid mode, where it's controlling multiple things simultaneously.